Hello everybody, it's Pastor Ross. Welcome to today's devotion. I'm excited because we're going to start the second article of the Creed. We're going to start talking about Jesus Christ. As usual, our devotion follows the noon order of daily prayer as found on page 296 in the hymnal. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening, morning, and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So what is the second article? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? Martin Luther wrote, I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord. Jesus once asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And, and they said, well, some say Moses, some say a prophet, some say you know, Elijah. And Jesus said, but who do you say that I am? And Peter responded, you are the Christ, the Son of God. And so what does that mean? And, and how do we confess Jesus as Christ with our words and our actions? How do we confess that Jesus is Lord with our word and actions? So when we say Jesus is Lord, what are we saying? We're saying this, that uh, we acknowledge that he rules over all things as our creator and redeemer, that Jesus is the Lord God himself, that is uh, Yahweh, in our human flesh. So Romans 10, 9 through 10, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Colossians 1, 16 through 20, for by him, that is Jesus, all things were created in him and were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that is everything that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. So why do we confess that Jesus is my Lord, right? Why do you confess that Jesus is your Lord? Well, Jesus has given us eternal life, and he's taken us into his eternal care and protection. So it begs the question, well, who is this Jesus that we are confessing as Lord? And, and he is the eternal Son of God, the second person of the Trinity who came into our flesh. So both fully God and fully man, the, the incarnation is what we call that. God came, he entered into human history. He lived roughly 30 years that we call that the earthly ministry of Jesus. He died on a cross. So he was born of the Virgin Mary and he died on the cross. So what does it mean when we say that Jesus is true God? We mean that he is the same uh, essence, the same God as God the Father, right? There's three persons but one being. There's there's one God, three persons, the, the Trinity, and that is a complicated teaching because it defies everything that, that we know in our uh, existence, but God is outside of creation. God is greater than creation. And, and so trying to find a model how to explain that in creation, that'd be like trying to use a rock to explain a house. Well, you're going to get some of the things, but you're not going to get everything. So what does it mean that we confess that Jesus is begotten of the Father from eternity? Well, Jesus has no beginning. He's, he eternally receives life from the Father. Thus, in the Nicene Creed, we say the word begotten, not made. And what does it mean to confess that Jesus is true man? Well, this eternal 
being, this, this God, he came into our flesh, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He, he was a baby. He had to learn how to walk and talk. Uh, Mary and Joseph had to change his, his dirty diapers. You know, he was fully human. He wept. He was hungry. So when we say that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit, what we're saying is that Jesus was conceived in Mary's womb by the will and act of God apart from a human father. So uh, Muslims will sit there and say, how can you say this? You're saying that the God had relations with the woman. And that's not what we're saying at all. We're saying that through the Holy Spirit, Jesus was placed into the womb of Mary. Again, we call that the incarnation. And how did the incarnation take place? The Holy Spirit fashioned from Mary a true human body and soul for the Son of God. All right? So Jesus was given a, a fully human body and soul. What can we say about Jesus as the result of the incarnation? That the Son of God, the creator of the universe, has become our brother in Jesus Christ. And so why is it important that Jesus is fully God and fully man? Because Jesus had to be a man to atone for our sins. Adam and Eve were the ones who sinned in the garden and brought the curse of sin into the world. God didn't do that. So if Jesus was just God, his death on the cross wouldn't be valid. It has to be a man on the cross. But here's the catch. Everybody is born sinful. We have that sin nature. We can't escape it. So the atoning sacrifice also has to be sinless. It has to be a second Adam, basically. And so it can't just be a man because man is sinful. So how is Jesus sinless? Well, because he's also God. And so the atoning sacrifice had to be fully God and fully man, which is exactly what God promises very on in the beginning in Genesis 3 when he promises a savior. Because that's what that means. It's going to be, have to be somebody who's sinless and also fully human. He says that it will be from Eve that a savior comes. And so the incarnation is God in the flesh. And what it means is that we have hope. We don't have to go out and make more sacrifices because the atoning sacrifice has been made. And we are covered in the blood of that sacrifice. We're covered in the blood of Christ through faith by saying that, you know, Jesus is Lord, confessing him as Lord. But what if you can't talk, right? But some churches, they can get in trouble by saying, well, if you believe, you have to say, you know, Jesus is Lord or invite him into your heart. And, well, what happens if you're, you know, mute? What happens if you get Alzheimer's or dementia? Because they make it about a cognitive thing. Well, faith is more than just cognition. Faith is more than just knowledge. It's more than just feelings. It's, it's beyond just those things. It includes those things, but, but there's more to that. And so when we say that, that you have to confess that Jesus is Lord, what we mean is your words and your actions. Basically, you're saying through your words and through your actions, I believe in Jesus Christ. Now, whether you can actually speak those words, that, that's not a requirement of Scripture. Because with the heart, one is justified. Well, if we're justified, you're saved. So Paul isn't sitting there saying that if only you can say, you have to say the words, otherwise you won't be saved. Well, no. Faith is more than just speaking a word or a few words or saying a sinner's prayer. If, in fact, you already have saving faith to say that Jesus is Lord. You already have saving faith to say the sinner's prayer. And that saving faith does not leave you if you get Alzheimer's or dementia. That saving faith is yours even if you can't speak. That saving faith is yours even if you can't see or you can't hear. If you have faith in Jesus Christ, you are saved. So with that, we're gonna continue with our devotion. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We pray for right knowledge of Christ. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that following his steps we may steadfastly walk in the way that leads to eternal life, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We conclude, Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me today. If you like this, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button and that little bell so you can be notified whenever we go live with a worship service or post a new devotion. And always be, please send in your comments or your questions and, and I can answer them. God bless and have a great day. Thank you.